<clears throat> Let's do it. Let's do it. Just like old times. Uh, I already forgot what I was doing. Okay, here we go. Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of show you guys a little bit of my flashback build uh, for this recent upcoming flashback race. Um, so if you guys are unaware with what flashback is specifically, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pop it up and show you guys. So Splashback is going to be a one-month league uh, that's happening in Path of Exile. It's going to have four separate leagues, like, combined, like, you know what I mean? There's going to be SSF, so Solo Cell Found Softcore and Hardcore, and then there's going to be the normal trade leagues for regular Hardcore and Softcore, all of them within the Flashback event. Um, so I'm just going to kind of have this pulled up for you guys. You can read through it if you'd like. Um, remember, this is all just posted on the website. Essentially, the TLDR... If you reach level 35, you do gain a Sin and Innocence Mystery Box, one per account, which means you cannot claim multiple ones. Um, and then everything past 35 is a random draw to acquire some MTXs. Now, all of this starts in about um, 39 minutes. So it's not like I'm, you know, short notice or anything, but make sure you jump in the game. So, uh, and it goes all the way up here to level 95. Now, to go ahead and go back and explain a little bit of my character, or I guess a little bit more to explain it, Flashback is basically going to be like a bunch of crazy shit put together. Um, and I'm talking about like all the previous leagues essentially are going to be combined and there's going to be this rotating. Every hour the zones and the maps are going to have changing mods. Uh, and you can see here, uh, Bestiary, Anarchy, Invasion, Breach, Ambush, Torment, Parandas, Beyond, Nemesis, Bloodlines, Abyss, and Harbinger. Um, but one thing before I go into my build, I actually want to give a quick shout out, even though I don't really use this too much. Um, NeverSync has updated loot filters. If you're new to the game and you don't really understand the direction of what you're trying to do, NeverSync does have some very, um, very good, like, outlines for filters that you can use. And all of this is going to be right here on Reddit. You can see me showing everything. There's going to be normal and strict. He has them set by, like, archetype. So you have like Archer, which would be like, you know, like bows, Mace's Axes, Casters, Dagger Claw Sword, Melee Two Hand Summoner Archer, and this is like, then there's like Strict, which I believe is for mapping. But anyway, wow, this file is really popular. Some tools might be unavailable until the crowd clears. All right, so I want to go ahead and talk about my character. Now, this isn't necessarily like a build guide, like I want you to play it, right? This is more of an experiment that I want to test out because if you guys are unaware, in the next patch, or the next expansion, or the next league, whichever we'd like to call it, um, they are doing a ton of reworks to skills alongside with a Vol skill rework. Now, one of my favorite skills has actually been Arc, but Arc, as a lot of us know, has a lot of issues with single target, mainly because Arc requires a minimum of three targets if it wants to start recycling the same blink. So, say, say this is Dominus, and this is Core Malachi, and this is Piety, right? And this is Rise QT because he always dies to Piety. So anyway, um, you would basically, if you know, you bounce here, you can't ricochet between two. You would have to have three to create the cycle. So if you have seven arcs on your arc, but there's only two targets, it can only go pew pew and then it's done and that's it, right? But if you have three, you can go one, two, three, Rise QT, four, and go like that. So that's kind of really interesting to me um, with arc. But I believe they're changing it, and the skill is getting some some a lot of love, actually. But we're not here to talk about that. That's for another time. Anyway, this build that I have created is going to be an arc character specifically for Solo Self Found. Now, uh, this is as a Templar. I don't know why it's showing it as a Templar. It's not supposed to be a Templar. It can be a Templar, but it's not a Templar. So let me just fix it so it's not a Templar. So one of the biggest questions I get on my guy is essentially... How come I'm not playing Inquisitor? So, uh, this is actually going to be done as an Elementalist. But before I start this, I want to explain why I'm not playing an Inquisitor. So, number one, there is absolutely nothing wrong with playing Inquisitor. However, Inquisitor really, like, locks you into place and forces you to be like, I want crit multi. And, like, that's pretty much it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, Inquisitor is a great character, a great class. I just don't really want to play an Inquisitor. I want to try something else. And I've come to the conclusion after talking with my chat and stuff that Elementalist is actually really cool. So Elementalist, um, for one, gives you a ton of penetration. 
It also gives you reduced effect of her sorry, increased effect of heralds and reduced mana reservation of heralds. Now, that's kind of another reason why I wanted to try Elementalist, because I told myself, oh, well, I want to play a Mind Over Matter character, because if I'm playing in the top side of the tree and I'm playing a life build, I'm probably not going to have too much life, um, so I want to go Mind Over Matter. But if I'm going Mind Over Matter, then if I use Wrath, I'm reserving 50% of my mana unless I pick up Aura Reservation. I just realized that this is like not even the right tree necessarily, but anyway, we'll fix it later. So I told myself, if you play an Elementalist, you can actually pick up Reservation of your Heralds, um, and it kind of almost mimics a little bit of the damage you would get from Wrath because you get so much penetration doing this. Now, another thing is that if you were to use Call the Brotherhood, I would probably say it's better off to go Inquisitor, but I'm going to try just with Herald of Ice and Herald of Thunder, and I think that just between those two, I'm going to have enough damage to freeze most white, well, pretty much all whites, most blues, and we'll see how far it gets into, I don't really think much rares, but we'll see at that point. Now, some other cool benefits with Elementalist is we get Conflux. Sorry, I don't like this node. I'm just going to skip this. I'm sorry. Uh, this node is really cool. So what this node does is basically it gives Ellie Pro Lift to your Shock and your Freeze. So if you freeze one target, it'll hit like that little group, which is amazing. It guarantees that your hits, um, that with a little bit of cold damage, slow a target, specifically a boss, by at least 10%. And it makes it so your Shock is a minimum of 20% of a multiplier at all times, assuming that you don't have any other multipliers. <clears throat> now, the reason why this is cool is Arc actually gets... I don't know if it's Chance to Shock or if it's... No, Arc actually gets quality of... Sorry, effect of Shock. I think the effect of Shock on Arc will actually apply to this Beacon of Ruin, along with the other things in the tree, such as, like... Uh, elemental focus. I won't be picking up. Um, I won't be picking up like the lightning over here or the lightning over here. I'm not really doing all of that stuff. Um, so that's that kind of adds like a whole bunch of cool synergy that I really wanted to try out. Um, and then P pendulum of destruction is okay. We don't really get much off the AOE, but again, mastermind of discord, very very good. And then being as we are a lightning based build, I personally would try to stack as much cast speed as you can. We do get 8% from here, so that's pretty cool. Um, but again, if you want to play it as Inquisitor, you are more than welcome to play it as an Inquisitor. I think that the Elementalist really fits the SSF theme a lot better. And I just honestly have never really played Elementalist. Um, so I'm pretty curious to try it out. So, as for what we have planned with the character, um, nothing really too crazy fancy. But I do want to try to farm a Pledge of Hands, and here's why. So, Arc is only a 5% base crit, which means its crit chance is really not that high. But we're going to try using a staff, because by using a staff, we gain access of acquiring, for example, down here for Whirling Barrier, 2% block, 2% block, 2% block, 6% block, don't worry about the power charge. <clears throat> and then you have really solid crit nodes. 30 crit nodes, along with 30, a 60 crit node and 30% crit multi. Then on the top side up here, we do get access to Serpent Stance, which gives us more crit chance, and then an additional 35 crit multi. And then, to the left, we have more crit chance and crit multi and arcane potency. Um, and this is already set for 113 points right now. Uh, if you want to push the build further, you can like come up here, grab like Power Charge, uh, Alchemist, you can grab like the Jewel Socket, you've got like the Life Nodes here, and you've got the Mono Nodes here, because remember you're playing a Mind Over Matter character. Um, in terms of links, I haven't really set up everything yet too much. Um, I did make like a little test of the character and it's kind of low level. Uh, and I was personally using in a three link, just arc, spell echo and control destruction. And that was enough to clear most things. I will tell you that arc does not feel very good. Um, early game, it honestly doesn't really feel good until probably in your fifties, maybe even like your sixties. For me, when I got spell echo, it felt pretty decent. So that's after Duresso and Comb. <clears throat> but one big thing to note is that Arc is not a very strong skill with little investment, which means you're going to struggle on bosses. It's going to happen. I'm sorry. If you want to follow this, you're probably better off using something like Storm Call, especially for things like Katava because they're stationary. You can also try a cast from channeling setup. Uh, you can try lightning tendrils out. But I personally am stubborn and I really want to use Arc. So that's that's kind of just what I want to do. But in the early stages, it is probably smarter to have a secondary single target set up. <coughs> anyway, that pretty much covers um, the skill tree and kind of my choices and what. 
um, whatnot. I'll post a video update, of course, as I play on the character today in the flashback. But just to show you a little bit of how my character looks, um, I'm just going to go ahead and go to my SSF character here, by the way. All right, so this is just super basic. You can see the tree. It's pretty much the exact same as I showed. Uh, one thing I will note is that I actually leveled up at the beginning with Spark. Uh, and the reason why I use Spark is because you can just simply mule over a Pierce gem, and then you can just use like Spark added lightning Pierce, and that's good enough to go until you're ready to use Arc. In terms of my ascendancy order, I went Pendulum, I'm going to go Mastermind, and then Shaper of Desolation, and then Uber Lab would be Beacon of Ruin. Um, in terms of my skill tree progression, I started off here, picked up the clusters right here, uh, grabbed Lightning Walker, you can also grab these for resistance, moved across, uh, picked up all of here, then grabbed Mind Over Matter. New subscriber arrives. It fills After that part, I decided to come over to the right, pick up Crackling Speed, came down, and grabbed the Shadow. And it's probably time to go crit, maybe around like in the 50s, because I'm 46 right now. But ideally, like I was saying before, the ideal weapon is going to be to use a Pledge of Hands, since Pledge of Hands is going to give 100% increased maximum mana, level 30 spell echo, and it gives a ton of spell damage. Sp um, you can actually farm it in the key area. Now you can farm it in other places, I believe, but since this character is going to be new, I'm only going to explain this place where I'm going to try to farm it. Uh, you can get the cards out of the zone called... Is it here? Right here. The key, or the quay, or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and then, last thing, there is the option of Elemental Overload. If you feel your damage sucks and you want to use Orb of Storms, you can use Elemental Overload. I personally really don't like having to drop an Orb of Storms for Elemental Overload. It's just really off-putting to me. You're more than welcome to do it. It just makes it feel clunky for me. So what I did personally, just to make it feel a little bit better, is I simply went on my... Where is he? Oh, yeah, and here's my links. You can just see Control, Destruction, Echo, and Arc. Uh, simply put, all I did to enhance my single target a bit is I have a self-cast con uh, conductivity, which is linked with Arcane Surge, which means anytime I basically hit a target, I just, uh, well, anything that's tanky, I just pop my conductivity, and then, bam, it immediately gets Arcane Surged. So that was pretty cool. Also, the purple Arc MTX looks really badass, and uh, your mobility skill is going to be Lightning Warp. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed you. I don't want to die. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I think my resistances are poo-poo. <laughs> yeah, my lightning and cold are not very good. And I hope to see you guys in the race. I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I'm... Oh my god, what just happened? Don't drop the chest piece. No, no, no. Okay. Take care, everybody. Oh my god, I just realized... I never hit returns. start recording. Welcome home. Fuck! Well, time to go find it from Twitch. I gotta go clip it. Hey, Hyperion with the 25-month resub. Much appreciated, dude. And 